Right now, the projects that we are displaying to the user are just hard-coded right into our project's component. However, that's not a long-term solution. What we want to do is have some way of getting a list of projects from our server. So in this lesson, we are going to create a project service. In Angular, a service is basically any set of functionality that we want to be available to multiple components. Basically, it's just an easy way to wrap up some functionality. So inside of our app directory, let's create a projects service, and we'll call this projects Dot service dot ts. Now, of course, a service is not a component, so there's no need to import the component decorator, but there is another decorator that we need, and that is injectable. So let's import injectable from Angular Core. Now, as I said, injectable is a decorator, and it doesn't take any properties, so we'll just call injectable, and then we'll go ahead and export our class here, which we are going to call projects service. Injectable basically makes this class something that Angular can use as dependency injection. As we'll see a bit later on in this lesson, we use dependency injection to get an instance of this project service within a component that uses the project service. And Angular 2 uses dependency injection in this way so that it can easily inject mock services and things like that if you want to test your components. So let's go ahead and add some methods to our project service here. First of all, we're going to need the HTTP module that Angular has. This will allow us to make requests directly to the server. So let's go ahead and import HTTP. And we will also import the response class, which we will need for some type checking. And both of these comes from Angular slash HTTP. Now we should also import the HTTP module into our app modules file. So let's go ahead and do that before we forget. Up here in our native modules, I will import the HTTP module. And then down here in our imports, let's go ahead and include the HTTP module. All right, that was quick and easy. And now that we've imported that in both the necessary places, we can go ahead and use dependency injection to inject this HTTP class into our project service. So instead of doing something like new HTTP in here, what we'll do is we'll create a constructor function here. And this constructor, we'll take as a property HTTP and we'll tell it it should be of the type HTTP. First of all, just to be clear, this first HTTP here is basically our own property name or our own parameter name. We could call this something like my Ajax link or something else like that. I'll just keep it simple with HTTP. And basically what's gonna happen here is Angular will see this parameter when it's creating our project service instance and it will match this HTTP class here to the HTTP module that we imported into our app module and it will inject an instance of that into this constructor here. Now, what we could do in here is say this.http equals HTTP, and that way we will assign this parameter here into a property of our class so that we can use it in other methods. But TypeScript actually has some shortcut syntax for that. What we can do is just give this a private keyword here. And this is the way we would create a private property on a class. For example, we could do um, private name equals Andrew or something like that to create a private property that would not be available from outside this class. But the shortcut here is that if we apply the keyword private directly inside our constructor, TypeScript will automatically assign this as a property. And now from within our other methods, we can use this.http. So let's create a function here called getProjects. This is going to be the method that we call to get our list of projects. Now with functions in TypeScript, we can still use the colon type syntax. And in place of type here, what we need to do is put in whatever value we expect to return from getProjects. And from getProjects, we are going to return an observable that wraps our type project. So before we talk about what that is, let's import those two classes. So I'm going to go ahead and import observable, and we will import that from rxjs. And let's also import the project from our project model. So what is an observable? Unfortunately, there's no way I could give you a complete introduction to observables here, but Angular 2 does depend quite a bit on observables, and I will try and make them as simple as possible as we go through this. Basically, an observable is a wrapper similar to a promise or an array. Both promises, arrays, and observable have other items inside of them. In the case of an array, we have multiple items, 
in the case of a promise, we basically have some single value that we will get at some time in the future. With observables, it could be one value or it could be many values. One definition that's sometimes used is an asynchronous array. Basically, an observable is a stream of data that we may get more of at any time. And I think you'll see over the course of some lessons here how we can use observables to make getting and setting some of our data quite a bit easier. For now, if you haven't seen observables before, you can just think of it as a type of promise. So what will we return from this function? Well, we can do this.http.get, and let's get slash API slash projects, and that route will return our list of projects. And then what we can do is map the response here to a function that we're going to write called this.extractData. Okay, now the map function here you can kind of think of as the then method on a promise. It's mapped just like on an array, where basically on an array, you have the array as a container for some values, and then map will perform some operation on each one of the values inside that container, and then return a new array with those new values. So basically map allows you to perform some kind of action on the values inside a container. And the same thing is true with the then method in a promise. You can call then on a promise to call some function on the value inside of a promise and then that returns a new promise with whatever new value you created inside that promise. Same thing with map here. We are going to call extract data on the response that's inside this observable and what we will return from this is an observable that wraps a project. So up here let's create an extract data function and this is going to take a response and we will use our type checking here using the response class that we got from Angular HTTP. So what we'll just do is return response.json. And this will just convert the HTTP response that returns to the actual JSON body. Now the value from extract data here will be returned inside of our get projects call here. And Angular will see that this matches our return type here because it will be an array of projects. Oh, and actually, I've just realized that we made a mistake. This is an observable that doesn't just wrap a single project, it wraps an array of projects. So we'll say project array. And so when this response.json returns to get projects here, and we return, TypeScript will see that this is an observable object, and it does wrap an array of objects that match our project type definition, and so everything will check out. So now that we have this get projects function, let's head over to our projects component, and let's import it. So first of all, let's import the projects service. Now, because we want to inject a projects service instance into this component, we'll need to tell Angular that it needs to provide an instance for this component. So let's add a providers property to our component decorator here, and we'll just tell it that it's going to need the projects service inside of this component. So in here, let's add a constructor and we can use dependency injection in the same way that we did in our service. We will create a variable called service, and this is going to be a projects service object. And so Angular will know to inject one of our projects service instances into this class, and then we'll give it the private keyword here so that it sets that immediately as a property. Now with this in place, we can go ahead and use it inside ng on init. So in here, we can call this.service, and the function that we created was called get projects. So let's say this dot service get dot get projects. And remember, this returns an observable. And the method that we want to call here is subscribe. And you can think of the subscribe method as if we were calling then on a promise that was returned. Or if you think about this as an array, subscribe is like the for each method on an array, where it's kind of like map in that it receives whatever is inside of the array, or in this case, the observable. However, for each does not return a new array, and subscribe does not return a new observable. So it's kind of like the end of the line. So subscribe is going to get our projects list as its parameter. And so then here we can just say this.projects, and of course this.projects refers to our array of projects here. This.projects will equal projects. And that way we can assign that value. And now that value should be available from within our array. And if we come back to the browser to see our list of projects, it looks like we are getting a 404 from slash API slash projects. That's kind of strange. Let me make sure our server is running. So if we go to localhost 9876 slash API slash projects, yeah, we can see the project data here. So we should get our list of projects. However, the proxy server doesn't seem to be running. Let's go back and take a look at our servers here. If I quit the server and let me rerun the server, if we look at the output that we're getting here, it did not detect a bsconfig.json or bsconfig.js override file. So it's using the defaults. Okay, that's not what we want. 
Um, if we head over to our terminal here, we do have a BS config file. Uh, let's look inside that. Um, everything looks okay. Did we forget to install the middleware proxy? Let's see. npm install. We'll just make sure we save that. HTTP dash proxy dash middleware. All right, so we're sure that's installed now. Let's go ahead and restart the server and just make sure that that is working. Okay, yeah, and I just saw that output right there. You can see right here, proxy created slash API to our server. Excellent. Okay, so it looks like we forgot to install that package. And you know what? This type of thing is going to happen all the time when you're doing development. You're going to forget small things and you'll have to backtrack and find the cause of a bug. But once you do, as you can see, we have success. We are successfully displaying the three projects that I put in the server. And of course, if we look at the network tab here, uh, let's refresh the page, then you can see that right at the bottom here, we have our request to slash API slash projects that our service is making and we have the response back. So we are successfully displaying our list of project titles. However, we're going to want to display a lot more than this to our user. So in the next lesson, we'll create some nice looking cards that will display more project information.